welcome to Roadmap to One Million. My name is Stacey Zeal, and if you're looking to make more money, gain your time back, and rapidly grow your visibility so that you can impact way more people with your brilliance, you're in the right place. This podcast is your one-stop shop for turning your online business dreams into a reality. My main goal is to give women entrepreneurs just like you the marketing strategies, guidance, and expert insights you need to hit that million-dollar milestone and beyond. Whether you're a coach, a consultant, or an online brand that wants to make a big impact, Roadmap to One Million gives you the actionable strategies and inspiration you need so that you can implement right away, no fluff, no fuss. So CEO, are you ready to buckle up and accelerate your growth? Be sure to follow the show and let's dive in. Get ready to uncover your Roadmap to One Million. Hey there, fellow entrepreneurs. Are you doing all the things but hit a revenue ceiling? You're building an audience, you're creating content and making sales, but you feel like something is holding you back from your next milestone. If that sounds like you, it's time to take our What's Your Missing Marketing Link quiz, your go-to tool to identify what's missing from your marketing strategy that might be holding back your business growth. Whether it's fixing your funnel or diversifying your efforts, this quiz will pinpoint those marketing missteps and guide you to success. Take the quiz today and uncover the missing link in your path to seven figures and beyond. So head over to stacyzeal.co slash quiz because success begins with identifying and fixing those mistakes. So don't miss out. Your business deserves to have the impact you desire. Visit stacyzeal.co slash quiz. That's S-T-A-C-Y-Z-E-A-L dot C-O slash quiz to get a detailed report and the resources you need to help you grow. All right, let's jump back into the episode. Hello, welcome, welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. I am excited today because we are going to be talking about self care. We're going to be talking about stress. We're going to be talking about um, growing your business and navigating that. And I have an expert, y'all, because y'all know, like, I love self care. That's my jam. I've done, I've had a podcast about self care, all the things. So I used to be a yoga teacher. Self care is my jam. But y'all, we actually have a licensed therapist and a coach in the building today that is going to be able to break this down for us. So I'm excited whether you're listening on the podcast or whether you're watching us live. I'm excited for y'all to get this information. So before we get started, I would love to introduce Angela Williams to the stage. Please tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, who you serve, all the things. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much for having me, Stacey. My name is Angela Williams. I'm a licensed clinical social worker and a coach. I'm really excited to be here today. I am a new mom. I've also got a little fur baby. Well, he's not a baby. He's old. He's about seven now. But anyway, (laughs) Um, I uh, love to, I live in here in Florida. Let's go to the beach. Those are some fun things. Love reading, all that great stuff. But what I really love to do is work with leaders, entrepreneurs, and CEOs to really help elevate their potential, expand their impact, and enjoy their lives. I love that because I feel like we are just in such of a season as business owners, at least for me, I'll speak for myself. Like I want to enjoy my life. Like I have never been the person that's like, I am going to hustle, 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 hustle now, sacrifice everything now. So that way maybe in 10 years I can, you know, loosen up the reins a little bit. I want to enjoy my life now while I'm building my business, while I'm making an impact. And so I love that that's what you do and that's who you, um, who you serve. Tell us a little bit about your background. Like how did you get into, you know, like, cause I know that you are a licensed social worker and then you transitioned to coaching. So tell us a little bit about um, that transition and, and your background. Yeah, thanks for asking. Yes. So uh, I started in the field of psychology. I did a lot of things, research. I was working in adoption. I was working in crisis. I was doing a lot of different pieces. Um, But really what inspired me to get into psychology and social work is actually coming from the family that I come from. So uh, my mom and dad both have a ton of siblings on each side. So my dad uh, is from a family of 10. My mom's from, or I'm sorry, from a family of eight. My mom is from a family of 10. Um, So we've got all sorts of different personalities. We've got awesome strengths. We got, you know, difficulties, right? Like so many things going on in the family. And I was so fascinated by how could this be? How could they be so wildly different? How, you know, what makes somebody really excel and what makes somebody really struggle. And I just really was inspired by my family, most notably, actually, one of my grandmothers. And um, she was basically, you know, a really important caregiver in our life. And 
I just think about how, you know, her life could have been different had her circumstances be different. So she Mm -hmm. um, was just, she raised like eight kids. Um, She was really good with like numbers and things like that. Um, But she also was depressed and she also had a really, you know, difficult life at the end. And so, um, you know, I really think about that and and I'm like, wow, I want to be the person that's helping other people so that they can tap into their potential so that they can have the life that they desire. And uh, really that that's the inspiration for me. Um, And so I got into uh, therapy and then I was trained in trauma, um, really a trauma informed practices, one of those being EMDR, which stands for eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. Um, have you heard of that therapy before, Cece? Mm-mm. Okay, so it's super fascinating. There's a lot of applications, but basically what we're doing is we are, the, the original use of it was going to Uh, find a distressing situation or event in our life and we're desensitizing that uh, because a lot of times we can get uh, caught in those feelings and those memories. Um, So I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but you bring up a memory that happened and maybe it wasn't so great and you feel the feelings come up Mm -hmm. in your body, right? Your body keeps the score, your body remembers. So what we do Mm -hmm. is we, uh, you know, activate both sides of the brain while we go back and um, you know, look at the same situation and change our fundamental belief about that situation to make it more adaptive for us. So, sorry, mm-hmm. that was a lot, a lot of stuff, but that, that. that's one practical application that I use in therapy. So trauma began to get, you know, kind of heavy. And so I said, you know, I love and thrive working with people on their visions and their goals and springboarding forward. And that's what I really wanted to help people with. And I adapted that EMDR uh, toolkit into a coaching uh, setting format so that we can work on enhancing performance, uh, enhancing uh, a lot of those pieces that we're going to talk about today, the calmness, the curiosity, the compassion, uh, ways to be that full leader showing up. So. Absolutely. Yeah. About that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for sharing your background. Um, mm-hmm. I love that you mentioned that, you know, your fa- having like such a, a big family really kind of sparked your curiosity about, you know, like how do people operate and how is this personality different than that personality? I think that's fantastic. And um, I love that, you know, you help us business owners specifically with enjoying that enjoying the journey. I think that that's something that um, a lot of people, you know, in the online business owner space, because we're just always on, right? Like, you know, there's like, if you have a a brick and mortar, like, you know, there's an open and a close, right? Like typically, you know, you foreclose as you go home, whatever. But online businesses, we're always on, right? We're always like jumping on Facebook. We're always, you know, marketing. We're always, you know, uh, connected and and, and touching devices and, and things like that. And so, you know, what are some signals that we would have as a business owner and in our life um, that we are stressed out or that we really are reaching that point or creeping towards burnout? Um, what, what are some things that we would have going on that would help us to like, you know, to be like, oh, wait a minute like, oh, now, like this is, this is getting a little too much. <laughs> Yeah, so that's a great question. And I actually had my own bout of burnout as I was transitioning into my therapy business, the first business that I created. Um, I was working a full-time job, and so I ended up working at um, at length uh, for seven days a week to try to boost my business while I was still working my, uh, my 9 to 5, 8 to 5, whatever. Um, so the way that it manifests, stress manifests differently for everybody. Um, so it's important to understand how stress manifests for you. And so ways that you can do that Uh, Number one is do a body scan at any Mm -hmm. given time. So you're going to start with the top of your head, take some deep breaths, and just really really give yourself some time, but focus in on on all parts of your body. Um, When I was experiencing burnout, I was uh, so tense in my shoulders. I was constantly getting massages or trying to anyway, trying to put that in my schedule, right? Um, I was getting sick more than often. So I was going to the doctor more than I ever had, like random illnesses um, and headaches, right? So thinking about all the ways that our body can hold tension and stress and just notice that throughout your body, do a scan. Um, and I notice even for myself for stressful moments, like I have a really tight jaw. I know that's a common thing too. We're kind of like clenching, like, oh, right? So the body scan is going to be a super helpful thing to start off with. Um, 
And then obviously like thinking about those times when you really want to be relaxed, like laying down and going to sleep, what comes up for you? Are you thinking about your business and stuff? Are you actually on your phone when you're supposed to be sleeping, typing something out or trying to follow up with a client or marketing or whatever, right? So think about where your energy and your thoughts are flowing right now. And think about how that feels. Like, does that feel good? Does this feel pressured? Does this feel heavy? Um, you know, you got to kind of sift through a lot of the information that's already right there. Yeah. Yeah. I like one, I will definitely say that when I am stressed out, my body is the first thing to let me know that I'm stressed yeah. out. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so easy for us to ignore, to think like, oh, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm just tired because, you know, I, I'm just tired and because life is stressful and the world is on fire, right? Like it's easy to just think that there's so many like external things that um, are causing you stress and causing you to be tired. But mm -hmm. I do find that sometimes like if I'm laying down and I'm trying to rest and I can't rest because I'm thinking about something in business, I'm thinking about something in my personal life, right? I'm not actually resting. Um, right. I'm just laying there and my mind is, you know, wandering. And, um, you know, so I love that you bring that up because it really is key for us business owners, I believe, to really check in with our bodies and to sit in that. And I have learned that through yoga. Um, yeah. I used to teach yoga years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, so I've, I've been practicing yoga for a while. And so I've gotten to that point where my, my body really, like my hips get tight, my, yeah. my shoulders get kind of tight, you know, like I, I feel like my um, it's hard for me to speak up. Like my throat chakra is kind of blocked and, yeah. you know, all those kinds of like, when I get stressed, I really kind of like, you know, I like, it's like my body goes like this. <laughs> right. um, and, and so it's, it's important for us to really kind of recognize those things. And I think I would like to add that I feel like sometimes as business owners, we don't stop enough for us to feel that stuff. We kind of just push through, right? Yeah. Like, are you taking enough pauses to realize that your shoulders are up here, been up here all day, mm -hmm. right? Like if you're just plowing through and you're just so focused on what you're doing, you're in that mo mode of stress, your shoulders have been up all day. You may not even realize, or have you taken a stop to take a deep breath, right? Like, can you feel your feet on the ground? Like I will absolutely feel like I'm not grounded if I have too much stress or too many things, too many in, um, inputs and things going on in my brain. I really like, you know, what are some things that you find or that your clients find that are helpful when they're feeling that sense of like overwhelm in business um, that help them to kind of bring them back down to reality? Yeah. So you touched on a lot of the great pieces right there I'm going to talk about. So, you know, you're, you're on it. <laughs> um, but definitely when we're feeling that, um, what I also like to do is, uh, you know, kind of do a little bit more of that um, reflection. So like you said, taking that pause. So instead of reaching for your phone, you know, when you go to lay down, maybe it's just doing that brain dump. I really have my clients, especially who are super stressed, do it in the morning and at night um, or you know, during the day, whenever you need, like after a heavy meeting, after your therapy session, whatever that is, like dump, 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 dump. Because your brain is so full all the time, especially if you carry multiple roles. We're talking about, you know, you're the CEO of your company, you're probably also the COO or the CFO or right. Like you're, you've got a lot going on just within that. Then we talk about you have a house to run or you have family members to care for or whatever that is. Like you have so many hats. So really uh, giving yourself a place to not just carry it up here, but getting it out. So voice noting, just, you know, whatever, getting that off your chest. Writing is so powerful because we can actually see it, right? Um, and it kind of slows us down a little bit. So doing that. Um, and, and like you said, taking more breaks. I really want you to challenge yourself to schedule more breaks for you. So I would, I don't know about you, but I used to set up my meetings back to back to back to back so I could maximize my time, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's important, especially if you're feeling that stress, to give yourself windows in the middle. And I know it's not as efficient, if you will, but it is in the long run because you're giving your nervous system that time to just come down for a second in your brain, the time to pause and process what just happened over here instead of rushing to the next thing over here. So yeah. definitely give yourself that pause. Um, movement, like you said, so walking, yoga. Um, I like to go outside and walk. I like to go outside and, you know, walk out in the backyard or sit there um, and do a little swinging or whatever I need to do. But I love the movement aspect because it gets us out of our head. So the more, you know, concentrated, like the yoga um, or, um, you know, anything that you can do. Sports is super fun, right? Because you're concentrating on something else, but your body's kind of moving through it. 
So that can be a helpful thing to, to kind of burn some of that excess energy off. Um, that can kind of get <laughs> built up as, as we go through our day. Um, so yeah, I, I think those things and, and really, um, you know, taking stock of everything that's going on, going back to that assessment phase. Um, really, I have a, uh, an exercise that I do with my clients and we take a look at many different areas in our lives, our personal relationships, our, um, you know, our business, our finances, right? We kind of go through and just rate everything like, like, you know, where, where's my level of satisfaction in all these areas? And so that, that also helps us get clear on where we need to focus our efforts. So it could be a ton of things, you know, stressing you out, or it could be one thing stressing you out. And so then we there, that's where we know we need to make an intervention. Yeah. Yeah. Those are great things. Like, so to recap what you said, one is getting it out of your brain. So mm -hmm. like really like making, doing like a brain dump or like, you know, taking all that stuff and getting it out of your head. Um, that also is really helpful for me too. Like I recently restarted journaling. I used to be a big journaler. Um, and then I kind of honestly fell off for like a couple of years. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. And I just recently, recently started getting back into it because I do find sometimes when I'm about to lay down, when I'm laying down to get ready for bed, my, my, my mind is still going. And when I get it out, it, it helps. Yes. Um, another thing was you were saying is take more breaks. And I love that too. Like I just got back from a vacation um, where I went on a girl's trip, went to Jamaica, had a fantastic time. I only took out my laptop to run payroll and that was it. Like I hey, am, hey. <laughs> I absolutely am someone who does not like, I feel like it physically hurts me to work on vacation. Like I really hey, don't yeah. like, yeah. like I, I hate it. Like if I'm like, oh, like last vacation I took when I was in February, I had to do some work. And I was like, oh my gosh, I got to pull out my laptop. I got to work. I want to just do nothing and sit by the pool. Yeah. And so um, what do you say to those people who, feel like they don't have time to take a break. Like, especially like if we think about our business owners where we're at now, right? Like, you know, we're scaling, we're growing, we're getting more clients. We may have more team that we're managing. We have more money flowing in. We have so many more moving parts for our business. Like, and they're just like, I don't have time to slow down or I don't have time to take a break. Like, what do you say to those people? It's really this reality um, check, but it's like, uh, if you don't make the time, your body will take the time. Mm -hmm. um, to write you if you are not right. So, um, you know, again, that can manifest in illness that can manifest in so many things that we need to make that time proactively, preventatively, so that we don't end up in the hospital. We don't end up, I mean, I know people who have worked themselves into heart attacks, young people, mm -hmm. not, not old people, people, young people, thirties, et cetera, right? Like have worked themselves into heart attacks and hospital visits and all these different things. Like, I don't want that for you. I really don't want that for you. Um, and so it's hard to do, but it's necessary to do. And there's a lot of layers that go um, underneath this too. It's also when we do the deep mindset work in the work that I do, it's we have to understand the fundamental beliefs that are driving you to work this way. Mm -hmm. Because typically what's going on is there is a belief of I'm not good enough, I'm not capable, and, and it kind of sounds counterintuitive, but that's what drives this, um, this overdoing, right? This over, mm -hmm. overactiveness. Um, the other piece that where it can show up is um, I do also what's called parts work. And we identify there, there's different parts of us that activate and um, we have what's called managers uh, in our system that activate to keep us in control of every situation and relationship so that we don't get hurt. So they're protecting us. But a lot of that comes out in striving, in controlling, in self-criticism, in right, like all of these things that are hurting us, right? It, it's our it's our system's attempt to protect us, but we have to have better relationships with those things. So beliefs and your managers, I could go on about this for eight hours straight, but um, we do have to have a good relationship again with ourselves, with our stuff. Um, in order to work in the way that's going to be sustainable and healthy. Yeah. Yeah. That's so important, right? Like, I mean, because I love that you said, if you don't make the time, your body will take the time, um, you know, because your body's job is to really kind of protect you. And if it needs to slow down, it's going to slow you down. And so I would rather take the time now to prevent that kind of prevent it from happening and preventing, you know, from me having a traumatic, you know, you yeah. know, mental breakdown or a panic attack or something like that. Right. right. Like I want to prevent that. I would rather, 
you know, take the time now than have to make that time later. And I also want to say, like, you know, like we can do hard things because I get it. Like, you know, I'm in a place now where I also feel like, you know, I'm scaling. We just we just added a new team member, um, you know, and so things are, are moving and I'm excited. Thank you. And I'm excited. And it's great. But it's also, you know, me having to understand that even though I'm in a season that is requiring more from me, I also have to up my self-care. Yeah. Um, I have to make sure that even, you know, I have to show up more, therefore I have to show up for myself more. And so I, I love, you know, all that you said about, about that because it really is key to, to, to making sure that we are proactive about our health rather than being very reactive. Um, so I, I love that. So tell us a little bit about um, one of the things I'm want I'm working on myself, and I want to. This is kind of will be the last thing I want to pick your brain about before I, before we wrap, and you can tell everybody how they can work with you. Um, is this like space of honoring how you work mm -hmm. and when you work? One of the things I'm work I've been working on with my therapist, um, and I've been in, I've been in therapy for like two years, and I've just graduated to monthlies. I was on weeklies, and then I did biweeklies, and now I've graduated to monthlies. Yeah. Um, I actually just met with her today, which is funny. But um, so one of the things we've been working on is honoring when and how I work. Because for me, like, you know, like I left court, I was, you know, in corporate, did the corporate more so than I have been out of my business. Like I, I've been full time in my business for two years. I was in corporate for, you know, 11. Right. And so I still had that corporate mindset of like, you know, you have time set times when you work, you work nine to five. Right. Like, you know, that's the times that you work. But I all I always had to realize that, like, you know, I was miserable starting my days at nine o'clock. Like when I had to be out of the house by eight o'clock, it like it literally was like me dragging myself out of bed. It was me scarfing down some yogurt yeah. and running out the door because I was running late because I'm not a morning person. And right. you know, I've tried to become a morning person. Everybody says you're supposed to get up at 5 30 a.m. I'm at the point where I'm at this point now, I'm just like F that. Yeah. <laughs> because um, that's just not something that works for me. And so now I start my days. Um, later, like I don't start, you know, client stuff or do, start doing really any work until 11 um, a.m. Mm -hmm. And I like to work later. Like I would rather work, you know, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Because then I can, that's when I feel like I hit my stride where I can yeah. really like kind of lock in. Yeah. You know, people aren't like, you know, pinging me and stuff like that. I can really kind of lock in. And um, there was this tremendous amount of guilt that like I had to kind of move through and these feelings of, oh, you need to be working, you need to be working, you need to get up, like, you know, everybody's up and everybody, people are pinging you on Facebook and, you know, you need to, you need to start your day earlier. But I had to kind of go on this journey of self-acceptance, I guess it's more so, like of accepting how I work. So yeah. what advice would you have for someone who may not feel like they work in the traditional corporate kind of setting, or maybe that doesn't work for them. What advice would you have for them um, if, as, as they are a business owner and trying to kind of create their own rules really yeah. um, is what we get to do as business owners? Yeah. So a few things that you said um, definitely align. So I would say one is going to be knowing your values. Two is going to be um, accepting your aligned way of doing business and three is going to be having grace for yourself so going back to number one knowing your values for me i was really always struggling in the the you know traditional work environment because i didn't want to get up i actually had a report to work at eight o'clock so i didn't want to get up early and do all that anyway <laughs> like either um and have to like put on my face and see people and talk to people right like that early like that just didn't that was a struggle for me. Did it for many years, right? Um, but in doing my own values deep dive exercise, my number one thing was freedom. That was that mm -hmm. was that's a personal value to me, and that is a value in my business. That is why I started my business is I wanted freedom. So I started my own therapy practice. So I wanted freedom to be able to charge what I wanted, work when I wanted, work mm -hmm. with who I wanted. Um, and then I started my coaching practice to get even more freedom, right? Of, uh, mm -hmm. Because I, I have a regulation um, to, to report to, too, in the therapy uh, world. So, mm -hmm. you know, even more freedom in that business. So um, knowing your values and then that second step is accepting those and, you know, feeling them through your body. What's aligned with me? I get to do this. Giving yourself that permission. Like, I get to do this. I make the rules. Mm -hmm. I call the shots. Like 
this is mine. I'm creating this. I get to. It's okay. I'm, I'm the boss here, right? Like, so you have to do a lot of affirmation, too, uh, for yourself and, and permission giving up. Like, hey, this is my shop. I get to run it how I want. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, people hit their strides in a lot of different times during the day. Like, my best work hours are probably going to be, I would say, like, mm, I don't know, 10 to, 10 to 1. That's me, right? You, mm -hmm. 6 to 8, whatever, right? And that's totally fine and let, and, and let it just be that way. And we get to do our best work during that time. So if I'm scheduling mm -hmm. a master class at, you know, noon, that's why. Because I'm going to show up with my energy versus at 6 o'clock. I'm, I'm already tired. <laughs> so, you know, that's, right. that's how we are all different in that. And then that third piece about especially being a leader and a CEO, we need so much to give ourselves grace on a daily basis. Like the need for that is so high. <laughs> being a female, being a CEO, being uh, all the different roles that we're in, like we balance so much. And because we're leaders, because we're calling the shots, making so many decisions per day, maybe more than an average employee might, you know, mm -hmm. actually, right? Um, and, and decisions that are going to affect people's lives and livelihood, right? Like big decisions, not just, not just that, you know, what are we having for lunch? Um, but we need so much space, grace. We need to forgive ourselves. Like we just really need that, that self-love like on 2000% at all times. Yeah. 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 Those are fantastic. Like I love, you know, the part about, you know, honoring your values. Cause you're right. Like, you know, one of my values is freedom, like in, in freedom in so many different ways, like, you know, financially, you know, mentally, all, all kinds of things, right. Just being yeah. able to be free um, yeah. and, and live your life the way you want to live. And so, you know, locking back into my value, it makes me realize that, yeah, like I need to be free to work when I want to work. Right. And so, and it does help you to release that kind of guilt. And I will say, I did have to go through this whole, like, you know, giving myself the affirmations of it's fine. You're one, I work in marketing. I'm not curing cancer. Nothing is an emergency in marketing. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing that yeah. is going to, you know, be life or death in marketing. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, having to walk myself through that sense of that, that need to be like always on or have that sense of urgency to get back to someone, you know, within two seconds, right, of them sending me the message. Um, you know, those kinds of things are things I have really had to tell myself, like, it's okay you're going to be fine. And I am recently I've been telling myself it's going to get done. Right. Like, cause yeah. I know I have a track record of always getting shit done. Right. right. And so right. even if I am taking a little time or I'm like, you know, taking a rest or whatever, like mm -hmm. I know stuff always gets done. And so right. I have to remind myself that I am capable mm -hmm. and that I do get stuff done. Um, even if I am taking a break or even if, you know, I am starting my day later um, right. than anybody else's. So I love all of those things. So Thank you so much for coming, Angela. This has been fantastic. I know everyone out there um, will definitely benefit from the information that we shared. So tell everybody about how they can work with you, where they can find you online. Um, and if they want to connect with you and go deeper, let them know um, how they can do that. Yes, thank you so much. Um, I I love I love this conversation. I could again have it for eight hours straight. Um, but yeah, these are a lot of the things that I want leaders to do to uh, you know help themselves because. Um, as leaders, we, we need to invest in our self-care and, you know, that's how we're going to make a bigger impact for the good in this world. So mm -hmm. ways you can work with me. I'm uh, currently, I have my one-on-one -on -one confidential coaching program. Um, I call it the brain soul coaching program. That's because we work on holistic ways to support your brain, body, and soul through this, uh, time as a leader, as a public figure. Um, so we're working on uh, ways to, you know, envision, your uh, your future, your uh, legacy, like what do you want that to look like? Uh, we are aligning your um, you know your somatics, your mindset with that vision, and we're embodying all of the things that you want to embody, your values, the way that you want to work uh, in, in that program. So it's it's amazing. Uh, we started at three months. We can go all the way up to twelve months. Um, and you can find everything about that program and how to reach me at my website, AngelaMarie.co. And then if you want to connect with me on social media, it's at the Angela Marie Williams. And you can find me pretty much everywhere. I don't think I have a Twitter, but everywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Awesome. Yeah, we'll definitely make sure that if you are looking for someone who is 
one, not only, you know, licensed in this area to be able to help people, but also is a coach that can go deeper with you than sometimes a therapist can actually go with you. Um, and I will say like, you know, as an entrepreneur, I happened to start therapy right around the time I was about to leave corporate. And it just, I mean, it wasn't planned. It just had, that's just where it, where it happened to be. And it helped me tremendously. Like it's, it's, it's helped me, you know, in so many ways that I couldn't even envision. And so if you are a little afraid to kind of face your shit, cause that's what you got to do when you hire yeah. a therapist is you got to be ready to face your shit. Yeah. Um, if you are a little afraid, right? Like just understand that it's a part of the process and actually taking that first step and actually starting to face it is really how you move through it. And then you start to realize that, um, you build that muscle, you build that confidence in being able to deal with deal with things that come up and, and that kind of stuff. So um, definitely make sure you all reach out to Angela if you are looking for um, coaching or therapy and that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, make sure that y'all share this with a friend, like share this with a, with your biz bestie, because, you know, at the end of the day, like, what is the point if we don't enjoy the journey? Right. Like, what is the point of building the seven figure business if you didn't enjoy it on the way? What's the point of having the, you know, all the money and all the impacts if you don't actually love your life? Like, at least from my perspective, what's the point? Right. So make sure you get the coaching that you need. Make sure you get the help that you need. Make sure you share this with a friend. Um, and if you have not followed the show yet, definitely make sure you are following Roadmap to One Million on all the different podcast platforms. I know Angela also has a has a podcast. It's called The Brains. The Brains. The Bigger Brain Life Show. The Bigger Braver Life, the Bigger Braver Life Show. Make sure y'all um, check out Angela's show as well. So we're going to go ahead and end this here. If y'all have any questions or any follow up things you want to reach out about, definitely feel free to do that. If you want me to um, get you in touch with Angela, please feel free to reach out to me, and I'm happy to do that. Um, so yeah, this has been another episode, another great live. I'm going to go ahead and end it here, and I hope y'all have a fantastic day. OMG, that episode was packed with gems. Are you ready for more? Head over to stacyzeal.co slash podcast to get the show notes and to sign up to get our top five podcast episodes to help you streamline your marketing so you can make this your million dollar year. Head over to stacyzeal.co slash podcast.